every action we do creates results. So whatever action we do, whether it is arbitrary or purpose or accidental or by coincidence or by circumstance, they all have results. So therefore, since all actions have results, we try to create circumstances, the actions will the actions that people do will create positive results. An example, putting a Buddha Manjushri statue here, and then when people come here to admire the garden without knowing, they circumambulate. That's a circumstantial um, situation where they make an affinity to Manjushri. They don't know it. They didn't plan it. That's not their intention. They don't even understand it. But because you put Manjushri here, and you create a place where they circumambulate, whether this way or this way, or they admire the beauty, you're creating a circumstance where people create an affinity with Manjushri and get blessed. Does everybody understand that? So a circumstantial creation of affinity or merit is done by a person who knows it for people or beings who don't. So all the animals that circumambulate, all the animals that sit near Manjushri, all the fishes that go around, all the insects, all the people, the tourists and guests, and all the spirits and ghosts and land gods who are suffering, who are alone, who, who died because they were very angry, they were very jealous, they were very um, um, attached, and they die, and they die with that state of mind, so they become wandering spirits. Even they get blessed when they see it. Why? Because we place this holy being here. Hence, in, in Buddhist places, they make Buddha statues everywhere. And they make it as big as possible, so that people can be blessed on purpose. I mean, you know what it is, you go there on purpose. People can be blessed by circumstances. People can be blessed by accident, meaning, oh, they got lost and they see it. So many ways. Because our job is to liberate and bless people as much as possible. A lot of people like the fishes in the pond in this life, they will not be able to practice Dharma. They will not be able to listen to Dharma. They will not be able to understand or comprehend Dharma. But by circumambulating around Manjushri every single day, unknowingly, even for food, they are making affinity to Manjushri. Why? Because the object is holy. What's the object? Manjushri is holy. Does everybody understand that? Hence, in Buddhist organizations around the world, and Buddhist places around the world, and especially China these days, and Japan and all that, you see huge Buddha st statues outside, isn't it? That's the reason. Understand? A little better? That's the reason. People think, oh, it's such a waste of money, she keeps a charity. Well, blessing people's minds is a form of charity. And the results of blessing their mind may not open in this life or immediately, but it will. Because of any actions we do wasted or gone, correct? So they're stored. In fact, the very reason you're here with me and we're sharing Dharma together is because of some actions you created in the previous life. You guys understand? So some actions you created in the previous life created the circumstance for you to be able to learn the Dharma now. Perhaps you and I were fishes swimming around a pond with a Buddha statue and we're here and I created the merit to be a monk, you created merit to be human to learn Dharma. Because whether you're a Rinpoche, you're a High Lama, you're, you're a normal person, you're a monk, you're a nun, it doesn't make a difference. The law of karma applies to everybody with no exception. Okay? So if a Rinpoche does bad things, he will have bad karma. Simple as that. No exception. Rinpoche's are not above anyone. No one. Rinpoche is not above the law of karma. Rinpoche is not above the law of cause and effect. Rinpoche is not above anything the Buddha has taught. A Rinpoche is the same as any of you. So everyone who has a body, speech, and mind, and has a kangsa or a mind, consciousness, must abide by the law of cause and effect. Must live a right livelihood. Must generate good thoughts of mind. Everybody understand. 
Now, are, there are some beings that we call the Rinpoche. For many, many lifetimes, they have meditated and they have reached the high state of mind. So, whatever they do, most of their actions is to benefit others, whether it looks wrathful, peaceful, beneficial, or not. There are those type of beings, definitely. All right? Like Saramji. Saramji can give you a piece of candy or hit you on the head, it will be a blessing because he's reached that level where there's no more self-grasping or selfishness. So whatever action is to benefit you. But for the rest of us, we gotta be careful. We gotta be alert and aware. So the rule of karma, cause and effect, makes an exception for no one. We are all the same according to Buddha's teachings. Does everybody understand? So I'm not better than you, I just know Dharma a little bit more. I'm not superior to you. I just have been in the Dharma longer, so I'm senior. So as a senior person, you show me some respect, or you give me some respect, and it's for that reason. It's not I'm trying to be better than you. You guys understand that? Because ultimately, all our minds are the same, unless you reach for the hood. Okay? So, all actions that we do can be circumstantial, accidental, on purpose, premeditated, unknowing, it can be many ways. And all those actions will result in karma. So, if we put a Manjushri statue here and some fishes swim around it, that's circumstances, right? Circumstantial. If somebody comes in here like a little kid, just wants to enjoy and play and he runs around, that's accidental. If this lady comes here in the morning to circumambulate, that's on purpose. All these three kind of circumstances, they collect merit. Why do they collect merit? Because the object is holy. You're not putting a um, bottle of milk there to circumambulate, it has no power. You're putting a Buddha image. So when it's a Buddha image, whether it's intentional, accidental, knowingly, unknowingly, you still collect an affinity. You still collect some merit. So that's why we always make the Buddha statues all over, outdoor, everywhere, so as many people can see as possible. So they can accidentally see it, they can on purpose see it, they can see it by circumstance, like an airplane flies over, they see the Buddha, everybody in there sees it. When they see it, the seeds of Buddha will be planted. Because the Buddha said, the Buddha has a disciple in Sri Lanka. He was a king. That time there's no pictures and WhatsApps and emails and nothing. And he was dying and very much wanted to see the Buddha's form. So the Buddha had a form of himself painted and sent down to Sri Lanka to give to the king and he blessed it. And he told the king, by seeing this picture, it will be the same as seeing me directly. Because by seeing the Buddha's body, we plan the seeds to achieve the Buddha mind. You guys understand. So the tradition of making Buddha's images arose from there. All right. So that's why we we do all this. So the Manjushri being here every time, guests, tourists, visitors, friends, family come here, they're circumambulating. Even they're laughing and joking. They don't know anything about mantras. They're still collecting some merit and connection Manjushri. Correct. So it's very beneficial. The fishes every day. They're collecting a lot of merit. That's why I put the Gente Chapel there for the Denton Chapel. They collect a lot of merit. That's why I request you guys to promote the Denton Chapel. Promote it all over so people from other parts of Malaysia and other Southeast Asian countries to come and pray Gente because it will show miracles. It has already. So it's very, very important. That's why we're doing that. Does everybody understand? Good. So that's why we put statues there. Remember that little talk I gave you. That's one. The second thing is when I was in Gandhi, I was in my house and I was with my teacher and students and I had a very clear dream. When I was in Gandin, I had a dream I was in Drepung. <laughs> so I was in Gandin Monastery, but I dreamt I was in Drepung. I don't know why I always dream about Drepung and I always feel Drepung is very home to me. So I dreamt I was in Drepung and I was in a monk house and it was ground level. And in front of the monk house, there's a little like a uh, ditch 
where the drain, where the water goes in, and when it rains, the water goes off. And then over that, there's a covering where we walk over, a little stone covering. Somebody walked over, and I was coming out of the house on this side, and there was somebody on that side, and they came and they gave me a painted picture of Monday Street. And I took it in my dream, and I looked at it. And the Manjushri in my dream was like this. Golden in color, yellow, orange, golden in color. And his hand is like this, holding a lotus with a book. Here is holding a akasa. Here is holding another uh, akasa. Lotus stem with a sword, and he's in the Dharma Chakra Mudra like this. And he's looking straight a little bit better. So I woke up from my dream, and I went through all my books, I asked my teachers, I went through all kind of all kind of stuff to look for that because I've never seen that kind of Manjushri, ever. I thought maybe it's just a dream. I was thinking about having an artist draw it for me and keep it, but I dare not. Because I'm not an authority to make up a deity. I'm not an authority to say Manjushri looks like that, he sits like that, and then I dreamed it and it's real. I dare not. Now, Kajasaramji said to me he had a dream and Manjushri looked like that. I immediately reproduced it because I trust him. I'm an ordinary person, so I dare not just make up deities. I'm very specific. And it was weird because three, four months later, I was flipping through a Dharma book, just reading, and I saw a picture of this Manjushri. It was a line drawing. And I read it at the Bandit Manjushri and I went, oh my God. So I dreamt about this Manjushri before I had ever seen it. And then later I started seeing Later when the internet came, I, I was just Googling around on the street and I started seeing other statues. And then that's how this came to be. So we we around here called the Dream Manjushri because this is the Manjushri that I kind of saw in my dream but confirmed later and in this form. This form is very rare. This form is the Manjushri teaching the Dharma and his leg down meaning he's ready to get up to assist you. One leg up, one leg down. So I, I, I made this all over. I made it all over not because I dreamt it, I made it all over because I saw it in a book and it's confirmed that there's such a form. Otherwise, like I said, I dare not. Whatever is in the Dharma, that is that. I'm, I'm not in any authority to change it. So when I teach Dharma Shri to people, I don't change things around. I give it to you like I learned. But the method I may do it is different, more modern. But the actual teaching, I dare not change it. Because if you change it, it might not have effect. I'm not that authority. Does everybody understand? So this is the dream Dharma Shri. You understand history now? I can share it with other people. Any questions about what I share? I don't want to take too much of your time because we don't want your boss to manifest as fierce black monkey shoes. <laughs> Any question? Good. That was a nice little session. This is what we're going to do. You are going to walk around three times. This is a stepping point. Slowly, don't trip. A lot of things are overgrown. Three times and recite Manjushri's mantra and think to yourself very sincerely, may I gain the altruistic mind, the mind that always thinks of others first. May I gain the mind that renounces, that renounces activities that hurt others and myself, renunciation. And I gain the mind of wisdom, which is emptiness. Wisdom mind doesn't have any more projections, no more ego. So think, may I gain the altruistic mind? May I gain, very auspicious. May I gain the altruistic mind? May I gain the renounce mind? And may I gain the mind that has wisdom, that counters projections, and my ego. When we gain those minds, we'll be free from liber free for liberation and away from society. And some of us have to put up with a lot of difficulties and problems to be here, to be here and receive teachings. So we should rejoice and think, all the problems I went through, I chose it before I was born in order to overcome them and not be attached and not be harmed to practice spirituality. Hey, when I was growing up, I went through tremendous problems to reach the Dharma. Tremendous. Unbelievable. And I, if I had to do it again, I would. Okay? That's good. So remember the altruistic mind, the wisdom mind, the wisdom mind counters 
projections and ego and the renounced mind. The renounced mind that the mind doesn't wish to do activities that harm others and oneself. Okay? So please put your chairs back and circumambulate. Thank mm -hmm. you.